All right, welcome back. So the next thing we're going to do, so we step zero in this process we talked about was clean up, like clean up the code, read more format stuff, move stuff out of the way so we can focus on what we're trying to do. The next step is arguably one of the most important steps in the process and one that a lot of people will miss, which is understand what is going wrong. And that frequently involves interacting with the test suites. So um, I'm running the MP0 test. And what I can see when I run the entire test suite is that there are several tests that are failing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and leave my main activity behind because I actually don't even need that for anything uh, and go open up the test suite. Now, your relationship with the test suite for the purposes of this project is a little bit different than it would be in real life. In real life, you would usually be the author of the test suite, so you would be intimately familiar with what it's doing. One of the challenges though, sometimes, or sometimes if you come into a project, somebody else wrote the tests and one of them is failing and you need to figure out why. So this isn't completely out of left field. But understanding what the tests are doing is a huge help when you're trying to fix your code. If you don't understand what's going wrong, how do you have any idea how to fix it, right? You don't understand what the problem is and problem solving is, you know, you might argue like 80% understanding what's going wrong. Or certainly you can't make any progress in a solution if you don't understand what is wrong. Okay, so I can see there are three tests that are failing. Now, if I went through this file a little bit and armed with some of the knowledge I have about how the app works, I would also be able to realize something that's actually going to save me some time, which is that one of two of these tests, there are three tests that are failing. Two of them depend, I just did three and then three and then this, three and two of them depend on one of the other tests. So it's possible that one of these tests is uh, failing and it's causing the other two to fail. Uh, what do I mean by that? So this first test here, test zero places route, it tests whether or not the server is providing the list of places correctly. Now, if this doesn't work, Basically, the whole app is broken, right? Like if this doesn't work, for example, the client can't retrieve the list of places either. And this test three client get places is also going to fail. So it's possible that the client is correct, but the server is broken. Now, if the client can't retrieve the list of places from the server, then it also can't display those places on the screen when the app starts up. And this last test is also going to fail. So essentially, it's possible that there's only one bug here. There are three failing tests but it's possible there's only one bug and the bug is in the server. It's also possible that there are several bugs and there's only one on the server and there might be others in other places. But in general, what I'm doing here is I'm zeroing in on which test should I start thinking about first. Um, the other thing too is that if this test was passing, but the other two were failing, I would have a different hypothesis about what the problem is. But because this test is failing, my initial hypothesis is something is wrong with my server. It's not providing the list of places correctly. That's why this test is failing. And then that failure is rippling through the rest of the app, right? That's why the client test isn't failing. That's, uh, that's why the client test is failing. And that's why the, uh, the test that looks at the UI and basically says are the right number of places is also failing, right? Because this is broken. So I'm going to run this test all by itself. So I'm zero, now I'm zeroed in. I've used a little bit of my knowledge about the app structure to be able to figure out which test to focus on first. Here I am. So I'm going to focus on this test. Now the next thing to figure out, so I'm going, you know, this is not a very long test, right? I could read through it and try to understand what's happening. And this is the type of thing that you are completely welcome and encouraged even to ask about on the forum um, publicly. Like we will divulge all information about the test suites. Like this is not secret, right? We gave you the test suites. This is code that everyone has. And we'll certainly talk about what's happening and try to give you ideas about how to understand what's going on. Um, I've tried to comment these very exhaustively, more than I would in most of my tests. Um, but, you know, and that's partly because they're, they're for you, right? They're for you to use, they're not for me, but also because uh, this is really helpful when you're trying to fix things. So number one thing we're gonna try to, zero, number one piece of information we want whenever we run a test and it fails is what went wrong. Because a normal test will test a bunch of things. It'll start off and it'll test one thing, it'll test something else. Good tests will test related things. They'll be testing one piece of functionality. But for example, you know, later on we have a search method and we have a test that tests the search method and it tests a bunch of different inputs. So the test is touching, testing the search method, but there's a bunch of different inputs that it's experimenting with. In this case, I'm gonna scroll down here 
Uh, and what I'm gonna find is, okay, what went wrong? It said there was a request that should have succeeded and the value of is successful is supposed to be true, but it was not true. Um, and here is this really, really, really important piece of information. So sometimes debugging is sort of like, you know, investigative work, like we're looking for clues. And this is a huge important piece of data, which is what part of the test failed. And you'll notice here that Android Studio highlights this in blue because this is a line number that occurs in our code. We'll talk about this again when we talk about stack traces later, but this is incredibly valuable. So you should always be looking for these in the output from Android Studio whenever you run a test and there's a failure or when you, run a, you try to compile and there's a failure, it'll typically give you a little more information. So if I click on this, it'll actually take me to the exact place in the test that failed. So now I've got to think a little bit about what's happening here, read some of this, you know, ask some questions. So, um, so essentially, the, the thing that actually failed was this assertion. And this assertion is that the value of places response that is successful was supposed to be true. If I hover over is successful, what, is, what am I learning about this? So this says returns true if the code is in this range from 200 to 300, which means the request was successfully received, understood, and accepted. This is an HTTP protocol code that indicates a successful reply from the server. How did I get here? So you'll see up here, I use this library that we use for testing to build what's called a get request to the server for this route places. Then I executed the request right here, and then I examined what happened. And what happened was supposed to be, it was supposed to succeed, and what didn't happen was it didn't succeed, right? Um, so now, you know, one of the things I can do is I can always uh, print off more stuff in my, um, in my test to, to see what's happening. So I'm actually gonna print off uh, this, this value called code. Now, if you looked at here, it said returns true if the code, and but it doesn't tell me what the code is. So if I print off the code, maybe that will provide a little bit more information. And would you have been able to come up with this yourself? Uh, probably not, but you could ask. And we'd be like, yeah, that'd be a good thing to try right there. Like print the error code and see what's happening. Okay, so let's run this again. Um, so I'm extracting more information about what's happening. And now I'll see that the error code is 404. Okay, so that's correct. It's not in the range from 200 to 300 non-inclusive. It's 404. I'm gonna break out my trusty web browser. I did this before. I looked up HTTP 404. Uh, this code you might have seen before in your travels on the information superhighway. Um, this is a code that means essentially that the server does not have this document. Like the server cannot process this request. Page not found, file not found. 404 is like so iconic that there's actually a, uh, apparently a Mr. Robot episode that was named after it, right? So this is one of the more common um, HTTP error codes, particularly from a user perspective. You've probably seen a 404 page before when you went to, you tried to type something and you fat fingered it or whatever. Um, Okay, so this is what's happening. So actually, I just from just a little bit of examination of the test suite, actually have a lot more understanding of what the problem was. A minute ago, I basically knew nothing. Now I know that what's happening is the server is trying to execute a GET request for this places route. It places the request and expects it to succeed, but instead it returns a 404. This is actually really useful information as I start to examine the server code, which is what we'll talk about next.